This is the Paracay Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, Bo Cook from Loan Market, BTZD, the official apparel partner of the Paracay Podcast, and the Parramatta Times, the official media partner of the Paracay Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another cracking episode of the Paracave Podcast. It is the interview-style podcast and we are back to the fans and members series Fans and members of Rugby League from all different clubs, from all different backgrounds, celebrities and just your normal everyday fans. And today on the podcast, I have a good mate of mine, Mr. Brian Rowe. Now, he is a Parramatta Eels fan and he is also, he was a host of a couple of podcasts, a co-host of a couple of podcasts, which we talk about in this podcast chat with Brian the Dummy M podcast and the Parramatters podcast. Uh, Has also worked on radio and, as I said, he's a Parramatta Eels fan, so we talk about the Eels of 2023. Also some favourite memories of him supporting the Eels. And we also an interesting take on how to support the Eels and... uh, critique them from a fan's point of view without criticizing them as well so we talk about coach brad arthur we talk about the team of 2023 as well so an interesting insight there from a fan about Parramatta's form in 2023 so a great chat there with brian i catch up with him every time i go to queensland so magic round and i last caught up with him at the brisbane broncos versus Parramatta Eels game at the Gabba in Queensland uh, a few months ago so I caught up with him there and I try and catch up with him there in Queensland every opportunity I get because as I said he's a good mate and we are in contact most of the time about Parramatta and he was down here in New South Wales and he came out to the Paracave and we did an interview live in the Paracave and I thought you know, perfect opportunity to get a, a podcast chat and have him on the podcast and get a fan's point of view. So this is what this podcast is all about today. Now, this wouldn't be at all possible without the help of the sponsors, major sponsor, Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leagues Club in the club shop, Bo Cook from Loan Market, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Teamwear, the official apparel sponsor of the Paracay Podcast, and the Parramatta Times, the official media partner of the Paracay Podcast. More details about the sponsors and the Paracay Podcast merchandise after the chat with Brian. So stay tuned for that info. But enough of me talking. So as Hindy says, get a beer, coffee, whatever you want. Sit back. Relax and enjoy, and let's get straight into it. G'day, my name is Brian. I am a lifelong Parramatta Eels fan. I was born in 1974 in Seven Hills, very proud person from Seven Hills. And of course, that's in the Hills District, and Parramatta was my team from day one. Grew up in the 80s, you know, when we were winning, it was fantastic. Sturlow used to have a sports store in Seven Hills, so I'd see Sturlow all the time, one of my favourite players. So later in life, I got into the media. I worked in radio. I was on Triple M in Sydney with my co-host, Glenn Bernie Majuri, and we then moved to Queensland. I was a teacher by trade. I ended up going back into teaching. And in Queensland, obviously, if you support the Blues, if you support the Eels, they got a lot to say about it, but there's been a lot of back and forth between the kids and I, and it's a lot of fun. So I eventually started doing a podcast called the Para Matters podcast with Glenn Bernie Majuri and our friend Jono, John Bartley. 
And we ran that for a year, which was last year, which was 2022, and that was a lot of fun. However, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about how the three of us, we just couldn't find the heart to do it this year because we didn't think we were going to go too well, and sadly, we did not. But anyway, thank you so much, Troy, for having me, and there's lots to talk about, and I'm very happy to be here in the Paracay for the first time ever. And as you heard from his intro, my guest today on the Paracay podcast, well, it's probably the third podcast chat that I've had actually in the Paracave. Um, I've had a couple of other guests, uh, another fan, Anthony Bulmer Breeze and uh, Jeffrey Morgan, who's a Brisbane Broncos fan, so he's pretty happy at the moment. Um, so third podcast in the Paracave that I can remember of anyway. Um, Brian is a massive Parramatta Eels fan, as you heard from his intro, he was in the media as well, had a podcast as well. And it's great that he is here today to chat with me about his support for the Eels and Rugby League and uh, his media career and anything else that we can think about. So welcome to the Paracave and the Paracave podcast, Brian. Thank you so much. Now, the last time I saw you was this year, 2023. We were at the Gabba of all places. We were watching the Broncos, sadly, thrashing the Eels. But it was at the Gabba because of the female World Soccer Cup that was taking place. And about half time, I've messaged Troy and I'm like, buddy, I'm in this seat. Which seat are you in? <laughs> and he's like, I'm in this one. And just logically thinking, oh, well, that's, well, let's meet at the halfway point. Yep. I literally almost did an entire blocky of that whole stadium to find you and ended up basically back at your seat. So I sent you in some wild goose chase and it was kind of crazy. But after about 15 minutes, we eventually caught up. Quick photo of us smiling, even <laughs> though we got flogged. Yep. And yeah, I basically had to then walk back all the way around the stadium, getting a lot of grief from all the Broncos fans. But uh, I don't know. I do love that about rugby league. I do love that we can actually have a bit of argy-bargy. And we're, we're not the UK. We're not Europe. We don't have that violence that goes with it. So it was a good night and well done to the Broncos. And I'm glad to see them actually in the grand final. Yeah, that was um, a disappointing night. Queensland is my favourite sort of venues to go up for mm-hmm. rugby league games, for Eels games. Um, and... Yeah, you, you mess as you said, you messaged me your seat and we're gonna meet in halfway. So I'm looking at the um what would you call them? Aisle numbers. Mm-hmm. And it sort of goes one forty, one thirty nine, one thirty eight, one thirty seven, and then all of a sudden it was one oh one, one oh two, and I'm thinking, What's going on here? Yeah. And but anyway, we caught up, and as we do each time we're in Queensland, because I think the time before that was Magic Ground, I yes, think. Yes, yep. Um, we caught up there, so yeah, we'd no doubt catch up every time in Queensland for an Eels game when we're there. Now, growing up in Seven Hills, mm-hmm. uh, was Parramatta, was that the obvious choice, or how did you end up supporting them? Oh, I can't recall, because I, like, I was a young kid, but I can't recall another team existing in that area like everybody was in the blue and gold and I remember that our mortal enemies were the Bulldogs I can remember that from my childhood but I guess my earliest sort of memory of the eels is we had a lot of paraphernalia in the house so I had eels woolen sheets and eels shirts and eels plastic cups yeah. eels plates nice. and so yeah my brother and I were were huge eels fans from the outset he sadly later switched and started supporting the storm oh. so he he brings great shame to the family yes no but doubt no i'm doubt. very much on the same page of you of you pick and stick and the eels were my team from day one and they're going to be my team on the last day now you also mentioned in the in the uh intro there that sturlo yes was a one of your favorite players mm-hmm. from back then yep and also he had a sports store. Mm. How many times did you visit the sports store? Oh, God. See, it was very it was very close to the train station, and you'd sort of walk that way back from school. So, honestly, I probably was in there 100 yeah, times, yeah. 100 times. And I would have seen him at least 50. And, uh, you know, he, he was always relatively nice, but very preoccupied and busy with running the store. And I, I think he, he wasn't there every day. So it was – you'd sort of see, like, looking back that – you know, he sort of had the business on his mind okay. when he was yeah. there, and so he could be a little bit distracted. Yep. But, yeah, I saw him so many times. Yeah. So he obviously couldn't challenge Peter Wynn then for a sports shop. No, but it I did. didn't last as long. I did have a chat with Peter Wynn about it, and what he told me was that back in the day, they used to be roommates. Yep. And he said that Snorky's actually really good at golf, and he completely touched Peter Wynn up, like won 10 bucks off him or whatnot. 
And very recently, he's called up Peter Wynn. He's like, do you want another game of golf? And he's like, there's no way in hell I'm playing <laughs> you again. And that was you know, 30 years ago. So, yeah, I, I never saw that side of him. I never yeah. saw him actually carrying clubs or anything. But I am led to believe, I don't know if he still is, but back in the day, a little bit of a punter, Al Sterlo, and so maybe a TAB tab in his pocket or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, most probably. It's probably mm. handy for him these days that you can get it on your phones and uh, <laughs> rather than the old school go into the tab. But... What about his playing style? Um, obviously, Parramatta won four grand finals in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, we've all heard about it this week with the Panthers going for the three-peat. Yep. Parramatta did it then. Um, so was it just Sterling that was your favourite player or was it generally, you know, Sterling, Kenny, Price? Oh, uh, look, I had nothing or against. Or was... No, Sterling was certainly... He was a rung above because if you remember back in the day... And I do miss it, where a third of the field would be punching on. And so <laughs> yeah. not everybody would actually be playing league. So there'd be big gaps in the field where you could actually run through. And it was his focus that really did it for me, that you never really saw him engaged in that kind of behaviour. And what you saw was him reading plays and looking for those gaps. And he was just, he had that intuition and he was very good at that. But it was the focus of, I'm not going to get drawn into the fights and the carry on. I'm actually going to play league and I'm going to win for my team. And that was the thing, that focus that really did it for me, yeah. Except for that one day in 1986 at Parramatta Stadium where he decided to take on Les Davidson and well, got you're sin bin. You're allowed <laughs> one. You're allowed one, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah. He'd already made his mark by then. But, um, yeah, look, they certainly were a great team back in the 80s, um, 81, 82, 83, 86. Uh, we, as I said before, we've all heard about it this week with the Panthers going for the three-peat. Mm-hmm. Just sort of off the subject of supporting mm-hmm. the Eels, how do you reckon that the um, Eels of the 80s and those 81, 82, 83 sides and the Panthers of today, mm-hmm. I know it's different eras, it's different rules, it's different uh, size players, different. Um, it's all changed from back then 40 years ago. If there was a game played today and the Eels of the 80s had the same uh, training facilities and mm-hmm. and recovery facilities, how, who do you reckon would win? <sighs> Everything being equal, yeah, because they would both, not that Panthers have won their third grand final in a row, but they would both have grand final experience. They both have standout players. Um did the Eels of the 80s have every single guy on the field knowing the game plan and knowing not to stop and punch on with a guy who, you know, is a copper in his day job like, you know, both yeah, of them? True. So I, I think you would run into that problem that there's a completely different mindset that uh, a lot of those guys were. I, for example, I was just at Paraleagues and what was interesting to me was they were showing a lot of repeats. There was one of uh, the Panthers Raiders playing in a grand final and whenever a player would score a try up would come their information and in their information was this guy's an alarm installer yeah this guy's this guy's a tyler and that was the thing that really struck me of like well obviously today everyone's a professional and everyone so i think that mindset's very different and so then the flip side of that argument if i'm going to contradict myself is you know what, they they still went out there and they still won. So isn't that a toughness? Isn't that a hardness? Like, are the players slightly softer today that they're babied and they just have got so much free time, whereas these guys played at the pinnacle of their sport around a full-time job, and doesn't that make you... Like, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the, the book um, The Day the Music Died. And I've so, heard of it. Yeah, yeah, well, essentially the story being that there was this hodgepodge, ragtag, thrown-together country rugby league side that got brought in to play against the best of the best and they were winning okay. and the only way that they lost the big competition was for the word to get passed down and the refs to call a few dodgy calls okay yeah and so here are these guys who aren't professional who work full-time jobs but they're hard as nails and they've got that drive so i think the drives with the eels but i think the professionalism is with the panthers and i know that's a long answer but <laughs> no nah, that's okay i tried the other day um during the regular season to put up a a Parramatta Penrith combined side and mm. I think the backs were predominantly Parramatta mm-hmm. um, and the forwards were predominantly Penrith. Yeah. 
Um, and then that's that's no disrespect to the Parramatta forwards yeah, of, of, of the day, but um, and I think Ray Price was the only one, only forward I think that was in the starting lineup uh, of that side. So yeah, okay. Um, yeah, no, it would be very interesting to see indeed. You mentioned uh, one thing I will say is that if Kikau was still in the team. I think mullet for mullet. I think Sterlo's mullet would have beaten Kikau's mullet. So I think we'd have the mullet advantage. So, Yeah, true, true. Um, he probably wouldn't go up against Paps, but... From no, storm, yeah, well, probably, true, but yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's Storm, so we don't have to worry yeah. about him. Well, one, of the, one of the best things I... Uh, you mentioned there the... Uh, cha- I think Channel 10 had the game back in the day there and they had the jobs come up on the screen yeah. after a try. One of the things I used to like about after a, a try in the 80s is these days you see players, you know, like the Penrith Panthers, jump all over the top of each other and high five and carrying on and whatever, celebrating. But in the 80s it was more like, oh, yeah, good try, mate. Yeah, good yeah, try. Yeah. And, and shook hands. And, yeah. um, we didn't see high fives or that. Uh, back in those days. Can I just say, the bridge between that, the best one, was, <laughs> you, you, you would remember old, um, uh, <laughs> what did they used to call him, Shaken Kenny? What was his, what was his nickname? Uh, the guy who used to, on our team on the Eels, who used to like fall, like Cramp and Kenny. Oh, Cramp, Kenny Edwards. Cramp Kenny and Kenny. Edwards. And one of yeah, the things yeah. he used to do, which was great, was whenever, whenever our side would score and they went to celebrate, he'd pull opposing team members into the group hug and they'd always try and fight their way out of it. So I always found that pretty amusing. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, late in the game, he'd, he'd put the leg up with a cramp. <laughs> and, um, I think he did score a sneaky try one day off a penalty and took the quick tap and scored a try, I yeah, think, too. God so bless him. I think he's actually just retired from rugby league, I think, in the last week. Okay. Uh, from over there in England. Yeah, all right. So I think he's on t- on on tour, on holiday in Bali at the moment for okay. a month. So, all right. Um, enjoy that, Kenny. Well, he's in the right spot to get daily massages for all those cramps, <laughs> isn't he? Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Now, you said um, you had the eels, woolen sheets and mm-hmm. uh, pillowcases mm-hmm. and stuff like that. What sort of other eels like uh, memorabilia did you have, and what's your favourite piece of eels memorabilia? Well, right now I've got, and I can see you do too in the para cave. I mean, imagine you don't have much. Oh, I imagine that there's not much you don't have, I should say. But I've got the old uh, the mug that you put in the freezer to drink your beers out yep. of. So that is my prized possession because I like to drink beer. Uh, but. Right now, I've got a fair bit. I've got a fair few shirts. I mean, obviously, you know, nothing in comparison to you, but I've got a few shirts that I really like. I've got a Sterlo jersey, which I got from Peter Wynn's store. Yeah. I love that. Um, I do have a cape. Well, let me rephrase that. I've got a flag that I use as a cape, so I've got that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually had a Parramatta packet of tissues. So, yeah, I got a six-pack of them, and you open them up, and they're just regular tissues, but the outside is Parramatta, so... I don't know, some marketing yeah, genius somewhere. Up, up oh, there, there we go. Yeah, yeah you've got them yeah. up on the wall. Um, I've got I've got a throw rug for the pets where they can sleep on the lounge. Um, that's probably that's probably about it. I don't, don't maybe five what about, shirts. What about a favourite jersey? Do you have a favourite jersey? So that you have? yeah, the Sterling one's the the main one that I've got, yep. and so yeah, that's the one that I'll wear to school, and the kids will always always make comments on, and you know, I'll get lots of comments like, um, you know, thirty seven. 37, and they'll be talking about, obviously, the last, you know, 37 years oh, since yeah, we, yeah. So yeah, I get okay. heaps of that. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What else about living up in Queensland and teaching up in Queensland do they give you, like... Because <sighs> no doubt you're a New South Wales yes, supporter yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. so Origin time must be pretty um, full on. I bring it on myself, so I, I certainly stir the pot. I do a lot of that. So one of the things I do as a school teacher, I always do the same prank right on different classes every year and it works it works yeah. every year and so i'll just knock on the door and i'll just be yeah oh, excuse me sir or miss hey um i was just talking to the principal and he, he's got this amazing website that he wants me to pass on to the kids uh it's you know to help them with their homework and uh i was just can we just get them to get their organizers out their planners out their diaries and just uh, just write it down uh it's a german word so it's a bit weird so maybe you should just write it on the board for me and i was oh okay okay and uh, yeah, it's www.gothebluess, 
and they never twig and they write it on the board and all the kids write it in their diary and then you just wait that two, three seconds and one kid's like, go the blues! And then boo! <laughs> yeah. And there's always, there's always a, a, like a New South Wales kid in the room who just like cracks up yeah. la- laughing, you know? And occasionally I'll get an email from a kid like that just go like, well played, sir, you know? So I always stir the pot and then I'm always obviously bearing the brunt of us losing. I moved there into Queensland at year two of their eight-year win. Yeah, so right, that okay. was that yeah. was quite long between drinks for a so Blues that would fan. have been two thousand and eight. Yep, uh, and it took you six years to get yeah. a yep. a uh, Origin Series victory, yeah. and then I think it was another what three three. I yeah, think. so it didn't mean much, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's it's been a tough time in Queensland. I am eventually next year relocating back to New South Wales, so. That's going to be one of the great things about Origin Time. I'm not saying we're going to perform any better because uh, there's an interesting dynamic there in terms of... I do think Queensland wants it a little bit more than us. So I, I'm not so sure we've got a, a bright future. Obviously, Fittler's just retired and we're not sure. The two names I've heard thrown up are Ricky Stewart and Craig Bellamy and we've been down that path and that hasn't been a path that's led to success. So why we would go back to that, who knows? Yeah, I really don't know who who would uh, be the one to take over because, I mean, a lot of people, Freddie himself has said that it's not a coach's job in the NRL, that that's coaching NRL at the moment and it needs more time than that. Mm. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but hopefully we can break that rain soon. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I've got these revolutionary ideas about picking informed players and players who actually play the position they go into. I think if you combine those two things, good things can happen. But what do I know? So Well, yeah. yeah mm. We're all super coaches in the lounge room, aren't we? Mm, uh, I think that's, that's, that's a the... pretty, pretty much a given. I can recall when it comes to origin, when Ricky Stewart was coach, and this was the difference, this was the difference, is that, and it was Sterlo, it was one of the footy shows and Sterlo was on it, and Sterlo was saying, right, 11 of the 13... Queensland players are picked. They know who they are. Right now, and this was six weeks out, how many players are you certain on, are you locked into? And Ricky Stewart went, as of right now, two. And it's like, put all your money on Queensland. If you can't, if you can't yeah. pick players, like, they've already got them, so they know who they are, yeah, they know to yeah. get into their head and get them prepped and do it. But if you can't pick that at that point, then I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, well, let's just hope that New South Wales can get back to the winner's circle. Is that the same when the Eels play the Broncos as well? Yeah. There's a lot of... Put the Para Eels website up on the board? No, 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 I can't... Is there a my... different different prank? No, it's just it's just wearing paraphernalia and walking through a particular group of Year 9, 10 boys who just feed it to me and I feed it back to them. And so, yeah, I go out of my way to stir it up. Yeah, true. But well... there's this weird thing in Queensland, and it's still to this day, and I've been there for almost 10 years, um, that it basically... You'll talk to kids and they'll pay you out. Oh, you're an Eels fan. Oh, you know, like, oh, I'm like, okay, who do you go for? Oh, I'll go for Melbourne. <laughs> and you're like, oh, are you from Melbourne? No. no. You know, or I go for the Panthers. I'm like, oh, cool, you're from there. No. But obviously they didn't because have... Because they were winning they at did, that but, time. But they didn't have the teams that we did in Sydney. And so obviously until the Broncos come along, they, they basically had to follow New South Wales teams. And it still blows my mind. It's still like... How, how are you a Roosters fan? I don't understand this. This makes no sense. But, yeah, so they're not all Broncos fans. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There are, uh, there's a large portion of Cowboys. Yep. There's no Titans. Okay. And, yeah, you'll get the odd, I go for, I've even had the Parramatta's. I've had, yeah, yeah I go for para, uh, Panthers, Roosters. I'm yet to have a Sharks or a Raiders. But, yeah, there's this smattering of teams where you're like, I, I'm, I'm not sure of the connection here. Yeah, well, we certainly have had the wood over them over the last couple of years. Uh, obviously not this year, unfortunately. Uh, we nearly had them in Darwin, but then they overtook us and then just we got smashed in mm. at the Gabba, at the game that we were at. Um, but speaking of Eels-Broncos games, mm-hmm. uh, it must have been pretty good when it was 58-0 in the semi-final at Combank Stadium mm. uh, 2019. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, what was better for me was uh, essentially, what, two years later or maybe the next year? Was it 2020? It could have even been 2020. God, time flies. And reflecting, I've actually been in Queensland like 14 years. God, it's just gone so quick. But I was at the opening round where we played the Broncos at Suncorp Stadium. Yeah. And we were seated right on the try line. 
and in the first half the Broncos scored. We didn't. Okay. And then half time, and then we scored. So we literally just saw every, every try. single try. It was fantastic, and we won that game. So, yeah, the fifty-eight nil was great, but obviously the Broncos were were in the doldrums. Then they weren't going very well, uh, but they actually jumped out the gates in that first game. And so that was even better because they actually put up a fight. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say, and I don't know how you feel about this, but uh, I think Suncorp is the best stadium in Australia for rugby league. They just do it so well there. Yeah, look, a lot of people will know that I'm a bit biased towards Combank Stadium, Mm -hmm. but Combank, in my opinion, is a smaller version of Suncorp. So... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could basically fit Combank into Suncorp. So it does have the same sort of characteristics. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, it's the same shape, and look, the stadium looks the same sort of... Basically, sort of looks the same. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, the only difference at Combank is the the seats are steeper, um, steepest seats in Australia. But um, look, most of the players that I've interviewed on the podcast, um, they say that uh, some majority of them say that Suncorp is the best stadium to play at. Mm. Um, so yeah, it definitely has a, a good vibe about it, and it is good. Yeah, you know, obviously Magic Rounds played up there. Oh, they get do a, it so well. Yeah, yeah, get a get a full house there. Um, usually over all three days. Um, obviously Origin. I've only been to one Origin game up there. Um, that was amazing, and I've been to uh, oh, a handful of Eels games up there. So mm. I went to an Origin game. I went to one which where we won game two. We'd won game one. We won game two. And so we cinched the series there and then. Yeah. And how I didn't get stabbed <laughs> is just beyond me. I was so obnoxious. And, yeah, it was, it was a great night. I was actually in the Caxton before yeah, the game. Yeah. And I was, I was sending a picture to Bernie and Jono. And they're like, where are you? And I'm like, oh, where, what's this pub called? Caxton. I'm in the Caxton. They're like, get what? out of there. You'll get bashed. And I'm like, everyone here is really nice. No one's picked me. Everyone here is really friendly. And then I get to the game. And there's this guy behind me and he'd been drinking and he sort of like, I didn't feel threatened at all, but he was sort of pretending to be aggressive towards me. And I'm like, you know, calm down, buddy. It's just a game. It's all good. But I I, I was a bit drunk. So I must've, I think he was a bit more agitated than I, my memory serves because security came and escorted him out. But as the game went on and I was just drinking, I was just Fortress Suncorp, <laughs> and you know, like, and I'm standing up yeah. cheering. Latrell did that massive one end of the field try, and I was so I deserved a punch in the head that night. There's no <laughs> doubt about it, and I didn't get it. So well done to Queensland. Yeah, well, I, I concur with your thoughts there because I went in twenty. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Twenty twelve, maybe uh, something like that during that run, and uh, I was in New South Wales, mm. Jumbar, and. Went into the Caxton Hotel and going up there, uh, pre, uh, going up there before the game, I was thinking, oh yeah, the same thoughts. Mm. Oh, we're in New South Wales in Caxton Hotel. Geez, I'm going to get killed or mm. uh, abused or something like that. Um, even the streets of Queensland, I thought, yeah, I'm going to get abused and stuff like that. But yeah, they were not too bad there in the Caxton and even at the game. And one of my one of my greatest memories <laughs> is actually. Uh, the late great, I, I met the late great Andrew Simons. Oh wow! Um, it must have been during like half time or something, and um, it's probably not the best position to meet him because mm. <laughs> either either he was coming out of the bathroom or I was going in or, or vice versa or something like that. But that's where that's where we met, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember the score at the moment uh, at at the time or, or what was happening, but. Uh, I think we we're getting beat because I, I you know, stupidly, I just said, "Oh, come on, go the Blues and all this." And yeah. He goes, "Well, it's not looking too good for you at the moment, is it?" Or something like that, along those lines. So, yeah, that was that was one of the memories I got of him, and uh, that well, the only time that I met Andrew Simon. So, my my mate's story of meeting someone in the bathroom was Gordon <laughs> Tallis, oh. and he's a Tigers fan. My mate Mick. And uh, he was at the urinal, and uh, <laughs> the, this is back when the Tigers were actually, they were going okay, so okay. this is years yeah, ago. Yeah, fair enough. And um, he's at the urinal, and he didn't know that Gordon Tallis was, like, in the line, like, two okay. behind him, you yeah. know? And um, 
he's like, ah, you know, like he's mouthing off. And <laughs> then he's just like, someone goes, oh, Gordon Tallis is in. He turns around and he's just like, you know, F the Broncos. And Gordon Tallis just laughs. You know, he actually had a good, good sense of humour about it all. But, yeah, so that was his claim to fame, meeting someone famous in the bathroom. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, mine was just the outside, not at the urinal. So, yeah, it's not a great meeting place at the no, urinal. No, 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 no. Anyway, that's still someone famous that he's met. Um, we talked about Combank and uh, Suncorp. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on Combank Stadium? And oh, look, what, I, are, what are your memories of great games at Sun, uh, Combank? I, um, I think Combank's a great stadium. Uh, I do think the blue and grey colour scheme is draining. And this is one of the things I like about Suncorp, is Suncorp's very vibrant. And so when you go there... It just feels like it's really lit up and it adds that, you know, you talk about colours and the effect it has on moods. Yeah. And that orange and yellow is a real bright and happy colour and I find the blue and the grey is kind of drab and that's the only criticism I'd have of Combank in that sense. My greatest memory of Combank is my brother and late father went last year to watch us beat the Dragons and my dad, massive, like lifelong, hardcore. He was buried in his St. George outfit. The flowers at his funeral were red and white. He just loved St. George. So he didn't try and convince you you guys to go for I'm confident St. He George? Would. No, I'm confident he did. In fact, I can still recall there were baby photos of us in St. Okay. George. But it's that thing where you try and force one <laughs> yeah. the kid, and the kid then becomes that contrarian and does the opposite. Yeah, true. So I imagine that's how I kind of okay. became... You know, you're, you're making me relive as a toddler. I would have, would have been a Saints fan at some point in my life. Yeah, but there you go. So I have a photo of the three of us, and it was probably the first game that we got to go to together. Okay, so yeah. So the three of us, oh, you know. Nice. And so... Yeah, that's that's special. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah, definitely. And uh, Parramatta got the win that day. Too. Yes, we did. Yeah, uh, fortunately. Yep. Um, now, current players, mm-hmm. current players, and recent players yep. who have been some of your favourite favourites to watch over the years is, that, I mean, obviously you got the superstars, Mitchell Moses, Clint Gutherson, mm. um, but is there someone that's not so much a superstar, but one that you really like watching? I really rate Bailey Simonson. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've from the second he's come into the team, and he's obviously had so many positional switches, and that's had to do with, you know, injuries and some interesting decisions <laughs> being made, you know. So I've always liked his approach, and I've always liked the fact that he's always there, and he's he's quite the professional. and Because uh, there was always that, that sort of cloud lingering over his head that, when the squad got back to full strength, like, does he get a run? Yeah. And to me, he was there and he was present and he was trying every game. So if I was going to say uh, not superstar, it would definitely be him. Um, but if I was going to say superstar, I uh, am a huge fan of Gutho. Uh, if I was going to get another jersey, it would be a Gutho jersey. In, uh, and to be slightly critical of our club, I can't believe that they came out this year and went, oh, we're thinking about we good yep yep oh we've talked to gutho about you know approaching someone else for his position and moving him into a different spot and it's like this is a guy that at the 79th minute 40 seconds is still hitting it up and he's still trying very hard he saves so many tries he's just gives his all on the field and so to do that, I just was just a real slap in the face. I mean, first they took half the captaincy off off him and gave it to Junior, which I think was basically part of the contract renegotiation. I'm imagining that was a carrot that they dangled. But he's a guy that I didn't think had deserved to have that taken from him. And also, I really think the way they treated him this year, I just couldn't understand why you would do that to a player of that carib- of that calibre. And, for example, my mate uh, T-Dog, who I used to do the Dummy M podcast with, Die-hard Broncos fan, he's like I'd have Gutho in our team any day, any day of the week. Yeah. Um, let's talk about. Uh, well, let's talk about that podcast there, mm-hmm. the Dummy M podcast. Yep. What was that all about? So we did a hundred apps. Yeah. And uh, so before the show, Troy and I were obviously having a bit of a discussion about <laughs> things to talk about. And what Troy didn't know was that I actually took a big step away from league. And that happened around the Brisbane Bronco time. Okay. Was I was very unimpressed with the behaviour of the Broncos in Brisbane, you know, like urinating in tables and, you know, 
for the poo and the shoe and all that sort of stuff. And then those players just getting away with it in okay. the league. Yep. Because obviously they wanted to expand the market into Queensland and this was, this was their foothold. And they turned their uh, a blind eye to a lot of things, which I that turned me off the game and I was away from the game for quite some time. So, oddly enough... Uh, as the years went by, my best friend Bernie, he's a massive Eels fan and, you know, I became really good friends with T-Dog in Queensland. He's like my best friend in Queensland. He's a massive Broncos fan. And I was always slightly envious that these guys got 26 weeks of a sport to follow. <laughs> yeah. I was a boxing UFC fan, so okay. you get yeah. an event here and there, yeah, yeah, but you yeah. don't have that consistency. Week in, week out. Yeah. And it just dawned on me one day, I thought, you know what, T-Dog would be, he'd be a great co-host because I worked in radio and I wanted to do something creative. And... I'd actually, when I worked in radio, written this skit on the Dummy M, and it was like a parody of the Dally M. And so it was all about, you know, like, like an awards night where they get... Okay. And, and, you know, and, and, and I played it back one day and I was like, oh, I'd forgotten I'd even written this. And I, I came up with this idea for the, the Dummy M competition to play at school. There were 16 teachers, each had a team, and we came up with a point system for the infractions. So, like, drink driving was worth six points, or, <laughs> okay, yeah. you know, sexting was worth whatever. Yeah. And so we played this game one year, and... I always thought there was something to it. I always thought something should come of this. And eventually I landed on, why don't we do a podcast where we, each week we just vote for someone who's the dummy of the week. So it's not yeah. the dally M, it's not yeah, excellence, yeah, yeah. it's dummy. Dumbest player of the week. And T-Dog had always wanted to, he said, you know, if I had my life over, I would have loved to have been a sports commentator because he's a massive sports fan. Yeah. And I remember that him saying that. And I remember talking to my wife at the time. I said, I'm thinking about asking T-Dog to be my co-host and she literally spoke to me five minutes going he'd be great he'd be awesome and she's like and I was like okay well that kind of solidifies my idea and T-Dog went oh yeah I'll give it a go not thinking much had come of it and then suddenly it sort of found its footing and we sort of settled on the right format and then we ended up having people like Tony Barber and Wendell Saylor um, you know we had Peter Wynn and we had Darren Centre the inaugural captain of um, the West oh, Tigers yeah, yeah. and uh, as well as a lot of, because I had a background in stand-up comedy, so we had Austin Tatius and, you know, Gary Eck and Al Del Bene, Julia Wilson. We had all these comics on there. And week in, week out, we just had a hell of a lot of fun and eventually just got to the point where T-Dog's got two young kids, two and four, and we'll approach an episode 100. It was going to be at Magic Round and we just sort of went, you know what, let's just pull it at 100. Yep. So we did 100 eps and had a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, I always wanted to actually approach the clubs and go, you know, congratulations, you're the dummy and winner this year, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, Saints took it out, Saints were always pretty Saints? good, Saints were pretty good for it, you know what? No, no doubt the uh, barbecue, you yes, got around. Yeah, that was a huge one, but I tell you what, until this year, Eels were a very well behaved team. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. They, they were right down the bottom of our ladder, and so it was always, yeah, Saints always <laughs> seemed to, to get up the top there, but yeah, we were a good team, we, um, obviously there was a couple of infractions this year, but other than that, and that says something about our club, I think. So just um, just before we talk about that, what sort of incidents are we talking that happened during those hundred oh, episodes? Yeah, so uh, obviously, as I just said, the barbecue incident obviously got a massive run. Uh, Josh Dugan was a bit of a repeat offender. We saw him a few times. So he was the uh, guy. Yes. He essentially got fined for driving during COVID. Like he drove out to Lithgow when he wasn't meant to. Uh, something to feed the dogs or something. Oh, or I don't think he even had that good some... of an excuse. Yeah, okay. Uh, Curtis Scott was always a bit of a... He was a bit uh, of a breed yeah. offender. He was always punching someone or getting punched by someone. I'm trying to think of some of the big, big, big ones. Uh, I mean, obviously... He, he was the uh, Australia Day at the SCG, wasn't he? He got... He was in a nightclub. Under, under a tree, He was in a nightclub and he had a fight. Prior to that, there was the Australia Day incident. And then... He went to a bush team and got into another fight on field, like which was captured yeah. on video. So he was always getting into Biff. Yeah. And interestingly enough, there was talk of him possibly coming late last season into our team. There was, yeah. And I was like, I actually think this is a good idea. We need a bit of grunt. We need an enforcer. We need a guy to get out there. It's the old Phil Gould comment that a team needs six forwards, you know, two on the field, two on the bench, and two on suspension. And I, <laughs> I like that kind of that kind of mindset. So. Uh, anyone who, obviously the white powder with Melbourne was a yeah. massive one, like particularly with the CEO where he's like, oh, we don't, we don't know what was, what, what the substance was. And I'm a cook in the army reserves. And I agree because, you know, you'll constantly find me catching up, cutting up baking powder with an Amex, you know, where, where it could have been sugar, <laughs> could have been anything, you know, like, yeah, yeah, that was just yeah. disgraceful. Yeah. So, uh, but, but ours also had on field 
indiscretions as okay. well. So, yeah. you know, penalties and sin bins and things like that. But, so uh, no doubt Josh McGuire, he probably would have... Oh, JWH and yeah, yeah. Uh, Radley. Yeah. Radley and JWH were... Like, we had right running jokes. We even had skits on, you know, Radley having... Uh, or JWH having his own parking space, at, at, <laughs> you know, in and front the of judiciary. the judiciary and things like that. So, yeah, there were those repeat offenders who you just knew <laughs> that, oh, the Warriors are playing this weekend. Well, you know, or oh, the Roosters are on. Well, you know, this is going to happen. And, yeah. So, in fact, if I'm not mistaken... I think at the start of last year, I think JWH was like really quiet for like six weeks and it was unbelievable. It was like, what's, what's happening here? So actually, it was probably this year. It probably was at the start of this year. Yeah, this year, Because yeah. it was after the Sinbin Sunday from the yeah. year last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mad Mondays were always Mad Mondays were always great. They've toned down a bit this year, I think. Uh, uh, well, we Valentine Holmes jumped out the gates well, with his little yeah, baggie. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, there was that one, but... Um, we haven't seen many dress ups or um, any other clubs. Sort of, I mean, the Bulldogs they went cooking for the homeless. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was a smart idea. Well, it yeah. is. It is. It's giving back to the community, and yep. um, they're still all together. And yeah. um, and it's preparing the players for that team of what their future is going to be like if they keep <laughs> continuing with this terrible form. Yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of the Dummy M podcast mm-hmm. and. If it was still going today yep. with the Parramatta incidents that have happened yes. this year, how would you would you tiptoe across those, no. or would you no not get at in, all. get into the the meat and nothing is sacred. Again? In fact, no, nothing is sacred whatsoever. And uh, because my co-host T Dog would delight, and it would be first story. <laughs> well, absolutely, and, yeah. I, I remember there was one episode where the Broncos had had this big incident. And the eels one was like really tiny, but he still had to jump <laughs> to the eels, had to jump to the eels first. No, 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 there's none of that. But I can actually remember there were these year eleven boys at my school who were just always giving it to me, particularly about you know 37, 37. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was sitting, going to be thirty eight. And, and, and it kind of they kind of annoyed me because it was repetitive. Yeah, it wasn't, dude. You want to pay out of me? Awesome, but make it funny. Try and think. Yeah, try and think. And I was a little bit. Irritated, and one of them's like, "Oh, so what happened with Dylan Brown, huh?" And I've just fired back. I went, "Well, it sounds like he got some, and you're sitting there getting none, you know." And like he didn't know, didn't, didn't, didn't know, know what to didn't say. know what to say. And uh, yeah, but no, I wouldn't have tiptoed. I would have yeah. absolutely jumped in. So it sounded silly. It sounded like he did a dumb thing, and yeah, that's what the dummy M's all about. He would have been our three pointer that week, I guarantee you. And also, there was plenty of on field indiscretions as well which probably didn't help Parramatta's cause in mm. 2023 yeah I think there was 22 or 23 weeks of suspensions yeah. and I think that was including the seven that Dylan got um what about the on-field indiscretions how, how would you have gone about that well what do you think about those that happened this year I mean there was the RCG one with yep. the knees in the back yeah um there was a few high tackles um I, I think there might have been a hip drop or two. Yeah, I think the knees in the back was flagrant. Like, I totally was like, yep, I'm on board with that. Um, conversely, I don't agree with the league's decision to allow RCG to box right now because he was out with a fractured jaw. Okay. So to me, that's like, yeah. that's really stupid. You know, like, if you want to go and box in the off-season, cool, but don't do it after you've just had a broken jaw. That's ridiculous. So... That's my feelings on that issue. Yeah, I guess that's probably um, the off-season, but isn't it? Like, yeah, if you're serious about trauma they're, they're and on head hold. trauma, yeah, and that's true. protecting your players. I mean, your main thing is you are signed on as a rugby league player. Like, so for example, when Australian cricketers sign on to the Australian team, they have to sign a waiver saying they won't snow ski okay. because so many knee so injuries come from it. Yeah. You know, and so if RCG hadn't had the broken jaw, <laughs> fill your boots, but. If that's going to endanger him for our season next year, I'm not a fan of it in that sense. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, I as I said, I thought the knees were flagrant. Yep, send that one. The hip drops, obviously, it's it, it's a hard one sometimes to sort of like like to me it all comes down to intention, and so is the intention there? Like, is it just does it just happen in the natural fall of the tackle? And so I, I find that a very questionable ruling. But then, you know, the team that brought it in, <coughs> Melbourne, <laughs> it was deliberate. And that's yeah. a deliberate foul. And you're trying to injure players who they make their living from this. So I'm not into that sort of behaviour. Yeah. So 
I didn't see anything intentional in that, but there were a couple where it's like, Ugh. I've always uh, still, um, look, I'm still confused about a hip drop tackle. Yeah. Because I, I'm of the belief that it just happens in in the moment. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Players don't intentionally go out there to tackle players and do a hip drop tackle and, and hurt players. Yeah, yeah. And, and 16 of the 17 teams don't. Yes, you're right, Troy. So... <laughs> Yeah, I wonder who the other other mm, team would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. That's invented those um, mm. those other. Yeah, I know. I was just at Power Leagues and had some chicken wings as well. The chicken wings were lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, who brought that in? Mm. Were they crushed at all? Or well, um, you know, and there was some wrestling too <laughs> that that came in. So, uh, yeah, I'll get the listeners to put the uh, dot the dot the dots together yeah. and try and work that yeah. one out. But. Uh-huh. Um, well, staying on this year, um, look, obviously it was a disappointment of making the grand final last year. And to rephrase, it was great to make the grand final. Sorry, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, it I'm was just, a disappointing yeah, result. I, I, yeah, I got yeah. ahead of myself there. Yeah. It was great to make the grand final last yeah. year. Um, and obviously we went down to Penrith, but. Uh, it's disappointing this year not to make the eight. Mm. Uh, some say that we're out of the eight by one game. I probably reckon it was about two games, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But um, what do you think happened this year in terms of us not making the eight? Do you think it was uh, Brad's selection selections each week? Do you think it was the players on field that... Mm-hmm. Uh, contributed, or well, obviously they contributed um, to the results. But what do you think happened this year? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I had a had a big year. Like um, separated, father passed away. I didn't see a lot of games this year, right? So I sort of followed it through Bernie and Jono because we're in a chat together with yep. his, Bernie's partner Nick. Yep. And so, yeah, I more read about what happened and. Every time we lost, would then get told about it by the Year Nine Ten boys at school. So <laughs> that was kind of how I got my information. But looking at it from an outside point of view, I think your starting point obviously would be, you know, when you make a grand final, some of your players are going to get poached. And obviously, we lost Reed Money, and we lost uh, Popoli'i. Obviously, we got him for like two hundred thousand dollars and a washer and a dryer. And then the Tigers threw a lot of money at him. And why would you not? So. Yeah. I think there are – you always, when you perform well, I mean, some Panthers lost kick out. Like you, you're going to lose good players, right? However, they were able to maintain their form. I think Reed was a big one for us. Obviously, we got um, Hodgkin in, we got Josh in, who was coming off knee reconstruction, so he literally didn't really have a season prior to that. He, I think, was that touch too slow. Um, was at the tail end of his career, because obviously yep. a great player, so not to knock him. But he, yeah, just wasn't really um, that quick enough off the draw for us in that particular spot. Sivo coming back, Sivo's always a little bit hot and cold. He um, And Wonga Blake can be a little bit hot and cold too. I, I remember back in the days of Sivo uh, and Fergo. And, you know, they might have these amazing balletic moments on the wings. But their communication together was amazing. It's a shame it happened in the centre of the field when they were meant to be on the wings, you know, like yes. where there were always yes. the big gaps and Sivo can be that little bit lazy where he suddenly starts to chase people down. And, you know, he's ama- He's just unstoppable when he's, you know, like 10 metres out. But he can create gaps there. Uh, I'm not a fan of uh, the positional changes. I don't like that whatsoever. And again, as you heard me before, I'm very critical about New South Wales. Yep. Is, you know, my mate Jono... As a Queenslander, it was like, oh, no, Brad Fittler reti- has retired. Who's going to pick out-of-form, out-of-position players now? And that's the joke up there because that's what happens. So um, I – Brad Arthur built a good team and he got the team to a grand final. And so there's lots there to credit him with. And so I, I, I certainly don't want to sit here and sound like a BA basher. But I think – He's had his run of over a decade now that it's time for the club to move on because we haven't won a premiership in that time. Uh, so I've always been very questionable of his bench rotation, uh, and sometimes it's not existent. Like we yep. had a we had a game once where no one got replaced, and you had Channel Nine commentators going, "What's how, going on? How is this humanly possible?" Yeah, and even if if let's just say 
this is legitimately a gap in his, you know, he's great at other things and this is one of his weaknesses. Well, then at least when you see the other team change a player, do the same. It's not, it's not hard, yeah, you know. It's, it, it's not, yeah. a, not a big thing that we often get to that point where the other team are running around us because our guys have been on there too long. So a classic example was last year with Sean Lane. And now, first half of the season, we were all very critical on the Parramatta's podcast because Sean Lane got left on for 80 minutes. He's six foot six and he's tired. Yeah. And when we got to Magic Round, I don't know if you remember it, where he eventually got pulled off and he, and he was on the verge of vomiting on the sideline. Yeah. Now, the second half of the season, this guy know. called Sean Lane walks onto the field and he's an 80 minute beast. And you're sitting there going, well, yeah. I've got to take that back. BA turned this guy into an 80 minute killer. And what an amazing... But then an article comes out about Sean Lane where Sean goes, oh, B.A. called me into his office and went, oh, you're playing really well. What's your secret? Like he had no, no concept okay. of it. Yeah, and so, so I think we often, we sit here as armchair experts and go, I think this is their motivation. I think this is why they're doing it, you know. And so we were critical and then suddenly we were very praiseworthy. And then we heard the final result. It's like, I'm back to critical now. Like what is happening? We get this run of... And you might know because you're far more connected than me. But we've had all these. Andrew Johns was there. Then Mary McGregor was there. And then Trent Barrett. Like, like all these former great players come in, but nothing sort of seems to change. Do you chuck, uh, as a great player, former great player, Mick Ennis as well? Well, there you go. But I have my, if I was going to sum up BA, I really think, and he seems like a lovely guy, um, I really think... It's the horse, not the jockey. I think the team got there more than he got them there. And when you hear things like when the grand final came, our team was given the option of one training session on the grand final ground and didn't take it, and that our team turned up individually in their own cars and not on a bus where you're galvanising them with a game plan and you're building that camaraderie. It's To me, it's... How do you how do you pass up on those things? You know, and again, I'm not a coach. Yep. And so, but and not to be rude, <laughs> I'm making a joke here. But I do have the exact same number of premiership wins as Brad Arthur. You know, which is zero. And after ten years, great guy, give him a golden handshake. You know, he got us to a grand final. Good luck to him. Time to move on. I would so, say. with your Parramatta's podcast that you were doing, mm -hmm. how difficult is it to be critical? of the Parramatta side mm -hmm. and, and coaching side, but not cross that line, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm. Like, um, in terms of being being a fan and, and being in, in, well, media. Mm. Like. Well, I think we, we pro I think we probably crossed a few lines. It was never a personal attack. It was more that frustration of, why is this happening? I don't understand it. So there's a, a guy called Robert Conquest, right? He's got these three laws of politics. And his third law is you can basically understand the behaviour of any, any bureaucracy by picturing that it's run by a cabal of its enemies. So, for example, like some of the things that happen at the Eels, you're like, did 20 years ago some Bulldogs and Roosters guys get together and go, we're going to pretend to be Eels fans, get on the board and just wreak havoc? You know, like, yeah, read yeah. Marnie, let's let him go. Where you're like, why, why did we do this? Why did we replace him with an old player? This doesn't, you know, and it's no different with the Tigers, is that eventually you just get to the point, or with clubs like Manly, my mate Madigan's a huge Manly fan, he's like, why did they get rid of Dez to put in Anthony Seabolt? His track record is terrible. And so there's this, there's this phenomenon where you watch clubs and bureaucracies and you have to think, this is controlled by my enemies. Like, they're just making so many dumb decisions. And so I think we did a lot of conversations around that. Yeah. We were always very... We were very angry at the type of Parramatta fan who wouldn't listen to constructive criticism. Like, I remember making a point online on Facebook and I just made a... Well, I can't even remember what it was about, but it, but it was a, a passionless... Yeah. Just, hey, here's an issue we need to fix. And this guy jumped straight on me. He goes, I bet you're one of those guys who booed Jake Arthur. And it's like, I never once booed Jake Arthur. And I didn't mention it either. And so, hang on, but I've just been pigeonholed as this. And those fans who just refuse to listen to any criticism. So I did give you the example before. It's like a guy goes and commits an armed robbery. And his mum goes, well, my son shouldn't have done that. 
that was bad, that was stupid. And then someone's like, you don't love your son because you're saying bad things about him. It's like, no, I love my son, but I can say that that behaviour was, was wrong and it led to the wrong outcome. And so I get it, people want to love the team, but I would the thing that frustrated the three of us, I would offer is, particularly Bernie and I, is it's the love of the team that leads to those conversations of, I want this team to do well. You know, there are people there who are long-suffering fans. You see them and you see them every time you go to the game who are like in their late 70s, if not their 80s, and they're in their jersey and you just want to win for them. You know, yeah. you just want that for them. So I guess we always resented that you don't love the team and it's like we do a weekly podcast about this. You know, do you know how many hours we've put into <laughs> this right. team? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so that's the only frustrating thing. But I don't think we sort of crossed the line per se in terms of there were never any personal attacks. Yeah. I um, I was very much with, if we're talking about Jake Arthur, I was very much with Ray Price, who, to me, Dylan Brown was on track for Dally M last year. He opened that season and he was on fire. And Bernie even said, this is his breakout year. And his first five games were just electric. And then he got moved to put Jake Arthur in. Now, that was a BA decision, which led to a lot of flack on Jake, right? And I think it was the wrong decision. And even Ray Price was like, Dylan Brown's playing amazing footy. These guys have to pull their heads out of their asses, And that led to a lot of like hatred towards Jake when really it was a poor decision by management to put him in that position. I do love the redemption that Jake came on at the end of the grand final and scored a grand final yeah, try. I yeah. loved that. I absolutely yeah. loved it. But I never once hated Jake Arthur, but I really thought he put Jake in a bad position when he didn't need to. He didn't need to move deal bags. You know, like coming back to that. I think that was the Newcastle game, I think. Dylan went to centre. I, and... I can't recall. But coming back to this, that yeah. simple concept of, what's that? You've played centre your whole life. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep you as a centre, that sort of mindset. Yeah, no, nah, there's certainly um, it was a lot of frustrating decisions and selections, you, you could say. And, I mean, myself as a passionate fan, I, I make these comments and... Um, suggestions and it's like, uh, you know, disappointment in the selections, first of all, uh, dis dis disappointed in the rotation mm -hmm. as well. I mean, this year we saw Brendan Hand sit on the bench for God knows how long mm -hmm. and then um, when he came on for his debut game against the Panthers, he scored a try, he smashed it and everyone was, everyone was saying, well, yeah, he should have been there quicker, which probably right mm. the amount of times that brad's left a player on the bench for no minutes that's right um you can't do that in rugby league um i mean you look at the top teams they don't do that mm. <laughs> they use all their players um i mean even what you said before about the the team bus and players going there singly i i agree with uh i, I don't agree with that i agree with getting the bus yeah. and you know going as a team yeah. um i don't know if you remember just to jump in when we went to Townsville and we played the Cowboys last year and the decision was, we're not going to acclimatise, we're flying in together, this is going to be a raid, we're going to win, we're going to come back. And that's what happened. And you look at that and you go, that's, that's a team mindset. We're going in together. This is, we're a unit, we're Vikings, we're on this raid, you know. But then when the big dance come, to, to not have everyone together... I always come back to the quote about Wayne Bennett, that as a coach, he knows who to yell at and who needs a hug. And that's what the coach should be doing on grand final day. You know, like we should be together and they should be up and leading that team on the bus. I'm not saying it would have made the difference that we won. No, but no. Imagine, imagine just rocking up on your own on grand final. Like that just seems crazy. Well, me. I mean, I even think you know, even regular club club games, they mm. should be yeah. together and going as a unit. Mm. I mean, I got told that it's because you know players live in the city and then they have to come back to the oh. training centre and poor guys um, on their six figure know, some salary. Live, some live oh. out, out out here, oh. out here in the the golden west of Penrith, and um, would have to go to Kellyville and yeah, for the biggest I don't know. Game I of just, lives. yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I, like the club I, couldn't put them up in Parramatta overnight the night before, and then took them from that spot. Well, you know? yeah, I mean the Panthers, I think, stayed at the Parramatta Park Royal last yeah. last week, I yeah. think. So, yeah. I mean, they they probably, 
I'm not sure where they live, but probably majority live them around the Penrith area. Mm. I'm sure some of them live out of the area, but mm. to stay in Parramatta, like close to Homebush, mm. a core stadium, and then uh, they've got their own big fancy bus with a big panther on the side and that, mm. but... Yeah, I think that's one thing that they need to do is yeah, travel. I mean, they go to Canberra and Newcastle on a bus. That's right, that's right. Um, yeah, and, they, and they've got to travel from wherever they live to catch the bus. They're not going to be picked up on the way. Yeah, I'm not. I, it's, it's not an excuse that flies with me, to be honest. Yeah, it's yeah. very much that should have happened. and I, I can't. I, that was such an oversight to me. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, nah, definitely. Um, you mentioned there... Brad Arthur, you think his time is up? Mm-hmm. If if you were to, um, if that did hypothetically happen, yep. who would you want to see as coach of the Eagles? Anyone who makes the three decisions that we've talked about, right? So, <laughs> plays players in position, okay, uses the bench, right? And I'm going to throw this other one up here. Is, I come back to my point that I think it was more the horse than the jockey last year. I think there are just those moments of magic that happen on the field between Mitch Moses, Dylan and Gutho that create openings and that lead to tries. More so than... Because if you go back a year, I'm glad to see it's out of Mitch's game, but Mitch used to do this thing where he'd sort of slow down and hold the ball out and pretend that he was going to do something amazing. And he always got tackled. It was like, why do you keep doing this? And that's disappeared from his game. But what we don't see is, okay, we go out there like in the grand final and we just get rocked. We get put on our ass. And so what's our plan B? You know, we're not a team with a plan B. And so whoever the coach is, is someone who can actually game plan, someone who can be, this is a team we need to get into the grind with. And once we've held them off for 20 minutes, they get tired, then I want you guys on the wings to do your damage, right? Or, okay, this is a team that's super quick. All right, so I want to slow them down. I want to... I, you, to me, it, it, there's not enough game planning happening right now. Now, that said, let's just say we do get a coach who's got those qualities, but then probably is, has deficits in other areas, you know? So, again, it's easy to sit here and say all these things, and let's give Brad credit for getting us to a grand final. Yep, and definitely. And I want to credit him as well, other than what happened last or this year with Dylan Brown, that I had a competition that ran for two and a half years called the Dummy M. Eels were hardly ever mentioned. And so that's a team with a club and a culture where the players aren't out there up to shenanigans, you know, snorting cocaine in hotel rooms in Melbourne. You know, they're not doing that stuff. And so that actually says a lot, I think, the culture and the character of our Parramatta Eels. Yep. And, and he deserves some of the credit for that. So, you know, uh, but I just think we need someone with a strategy, someone who uses the bench, <laughs> you know, and someone who stops playing players out of position. Does it need to be a, does it need to be a Parramatta person or it can be an outside? No, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, because there was always, and you know this, you would know this, that everyone's always like, the, the holy grail is Sterlo comes back and coaches the team. And it's like, well, let's look at that objectively. What coaching experience does he have? Uh, you know, because you get people like, you know, Phil Gould went to the Bulldogs training. He took over the team last year for one game, which they won. But I guarantee you, two, three games later, under him, they just go back to their crap losing. So you can get as many legends as you yeah, want. Yeah, well, we had uh, early 90s. We had Ron Hildich mm-hmm. and Mick Cronin yep. coach the club. And, and Jason Taylor came along, and people respected Jason Taylor. Yeah. And so just because you get someone with an aura... It doesn't necessarily translate to... So Success. I really think we're at that point now that we're into a rebuild phase. We literally are. You know, we've still got some great bones in our team. We really do. But we're on that downward trajectory where we're going to have to rebuild. And so the point now is it's best to do that with a new coach. So... Listen. All right. So that's sort of all the eels... We could probably talk eels forever, I, <laughs> I, I guess. Um, try and solve all the issues here, and uh, as fans, and uh, talk about all the good times and that. But look, we're recording this the day before the NRL Grand Final, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the AFL Grand Final is on at the moment. And but uh, let's talk about this Grand Final, the NRL Grand Final. 
between the Panthers and the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Um, yourself living up in Queensland, has the, obviously there's been uh, massive interest in this game and massive media attention and uh, probably colours everywhere mm-hmm. and uh, along with the Brisbane Lions in the AFL Grand Final as well. Yep, yep. Um, what, what, what's what been the vibe up been like up in Brisbane um, before, the, before the grand final? I think the interesting thing is that you go back to 2020 where they got the wooden spoon and, you know, jerseys were being thrown at the, at the league's club and, and, you know... Oh, like, the wooden spoons on the training yeah, they, field? Yeah, they were left, jerseys just left there, like, we want nothing to do with you. So it's been a short turnaround, which is good to see. Because you know, you want you want a strong Queensland team. You've got obviously you've got the Broncos and yep. you've got the Cowboys, and there's another team there, but you don't really hear much about them. So they're they're the big ones, and so it's good to see Brisbane jerseys out there. I think you know talking to T Dog uh, and most he must be excited. He must oh be. very much so. Like it's good to I think you experienced it last year. This year it's, it's I, him. I think he is realistic enough to think there's a shot, but they're probably in for a loss. Okay. And so for me, I would offer that it'll probably just be a clinical Panthers. They've been there, they've done that. I mean, because we know as Blues fans that the Panthers element to our Blues team hasn't quite fired at the origin level, but when they're that cohesive unit as the Panthers, yeah. I would imagine it's going to be pretty clinical. I think, I would imagine most people are supporting the Broncos. I think Jerome Luai... Is kind of like the villain of league these days, and so a lot of people want to see the Panthers fall flat. We obviously have that issue as Eels fans of like <laughs> if the Panthers win, they get the three peat. Yes, so they they yes. take that from us. But if the Panthers lose, then the Broncos win, and you know like there's well. like a, uh, I, I mean I don't hate the Broncos. I actually you know through my friend T Dog, yeah. I kind of live vicariously. He loves that team, and he's a great guy. And so I'm like, you know what? I'd be I happy. Want, I'd be happy for you, know, for you. Yeah, I'd be happy. Plus, Suncorp is such a great stadium. So, uh, yeah, I do think Broncos are in for a bit of a problem. They obviously have uh, injury issues. You know, can Adam Reynolds last the whole game? There's been a few niggling injuries there that people have been speculating all season that there's been a touch of luck on their side that they're, they're maybe not the great team that they appear to be. Like, they're very good, but they're not just at that Panthers level. And okay. I think experience matters. Yeah. And I really think they're going to come in and it'll be it'll be pretty clinical. Yeah, I mean, certainly as a Parramatta fan, I don't want to get the three-peat. Yeah, I yeah. Want, I want to hang on to that yep. uh, for, for a while. Mm. Um, but... Um, or for at least another, what, two years, mm. <laughs> if Brisbane win this year. But... Um, Look, they were, they were one and two in the competition this year. Uh, we all saw what Brisbane did to Parramatta up at the Gabba. Um, as you said, there's a few niggling injuries there. There's not a lot of grand final experience. Uh, look, who, you, you're tipping Penrith? Yep. Yeah, by 20. By 20? It's going okay. to be. I think they'll just come out. They'll do what they did last year. They'll start fast. They'll get points on the board. And then the machine will just roll on. Yeah. First try scorer? Um, Who do you think? Oh, I'm going to go with. I mean, I, I wanted to say Luai just to, but I'd go Brian Toto. Okay, yeah. yeah, he's got a fantastic record in finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scored two against us last year yeah. in the very final. Yeah. Uh, Clive Churchill medal winner? I'd say probably Cleary. Yeah. I, I do like Adam Reynolds. I'm a big fan of Adam Reynolds. I've always liked him. He's just got that calm demeanour and he's very reliable. And so, you know, you, he lines up those kicks and, you know, those, those four points become six. And so I, he's very workmanlike and I like that about him. So I'd love to see him win a grand final. I'd love to see him get some kind of accolade. But uh, it's probably going to be it's probably going to be Isaiah Yo or Cleary, you know, be one of the Panthers for boys. Look, I'm going to go 18-14 to the Broncos. To the Broncos. To the Broncos. All right, let me hear think, why you think the Broncos are going to win. The, win I don't this. know. I just think they've got everything to win. And, I mean, obviously they've got the grand final to lose, but they've got everything to win. Uh, I, I think there's more pressure on Penrith. Not that they would say that because they say that there's no pressure on them. Mm. They've been there before. They're just It's just another game for them. Uh, I, I just think 
yeah, I don't know. There's something about you know Reese Walsh at fullback. Um, the games that he's been playing, he has got that speed at fullback. Um, something that Parramatta probably need to get is mm. a bit of speed at fullback. Love Gutho, but um, need need to get a bit of speed at fullback. We've seen that with the top teams. Um, and I think Adam Reynolds, he, he'll guide the team around and um, he's got that grand final experience. Kurt Capel as well won a premiership at the Panthers. I, I don't know. I just I just think they're on a bit of a roll and, yeah, I think they can get the job done. I think Herbie Farnworth will be the first try scorer. Okay. And I'm going to have Pat Carrigan as Clive Churchill. All right, well, it's on record. So. Well, that's it. That's it. We'll have to go back and, um, and and check that one after the game. But we'll wrap things up. We've got two two segments to go. Mm-hmm. The, the quick top ten. Yep. So it's more of a um, sort of this answer or another answer. Okay. Cats or dogs? <sighs> 51% dogs, 49% cats. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm actually a dog person. We've got two cats in the house. So. Okay. Uh, Ford or Holden? Ford. Nice. Bathurst coming up. Who's going to win Bathurst? Uh, Which Ford is going to win Bathurst? Oh, God. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be really chicken here and bow out of this because my landlord, her daughter, actually works on, I won't say which team, so... Uh, I think the fans will be the winner of that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 not a problem. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? I'm okay with it. I don't normally go out of my way, but I can eat yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, tea or coffee? Coffee. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? I have Star Wars tattoos, so that says everything, right. <laughs> the old, old, the, the... Originals. The originals or the new ones? Which ones are your favourite? Well, there's three. So you've got the originals, then you've got the prequels, then you've got <laughs> the sequels. So I would say... I actually was a big fan of the prequels. Okay. Yeah, I really liked the narrative in the prequels, yep. Uh, Rambo or Rocky? Ooh, uh, I'm an army reservist, so Rambo. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Peanut butter or Vegemite? Peanut butter. Yeah, okay, yeah. Morning or night person? Morning. Okay, yeah. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Seinfeld or Friends? Seinfeld, yeah. Good choice. All right, the set of six. Okay. Uh, Favourite sport outside of rugby league? Boxing. Oh, yeah. Silly, silly question. You yep. mentioned that before. Yep. Uh, Favourite holiday destination? Uh, I've been to Thailand three times to train at Tiger Muay Thai, so I guess it's... Oh, I've been to Nepal three times trekking. Nepal. I'll, okay. I'll say Nepal, yeah. yeah. Uh, who would be the most famous person you'd love to meet? Um, or who would you have loved to have met if they've passed away? Oh, um, so I can be a yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what yeah. you're saying. I I think there's an issue about meeting your idols. So I, I actually emailed President Trump to see if I could get him on the podcast. <laughs> okay, and so I would have loved to have gotten him as a guest, and because um, that would have boosted our show. So oh. I'm going to go with President Trump. Did you get any sort of response back or nothing? No, but years ago I wrote a book and I got an autograph from President Bush, George Bush Jr. So okay. that's what made me think, well, Maybe. I got in touch last time. Yeah, yeah so. okay. Um, what's your specialty dish in the kitchen or on the barbecue? Uh, so I'm a cook in the Army Reserves. Oh, well, this will be right up your alley then. So I got a, What's your go-to? Oh, I've got a pretty good slow cooker spaghetti. Um, I've got a good fried chicken wings recipe. Um... Yeah, I'll probably go probably go the slow cooker spaghetti. It's pretty it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Now I usually say which former which three former players, but I'll say which three former guests on your dummy M podcast mm-hmm. wouldn't you want to be on a deserted island with and why? Uh I wouldn't want to be on a deserted yeah. island with. Yeah, who wouldn't you want to be stuck with? Well, Wendell Saylor can talk a fair bit, so I think after a while the stories would wear a bit, a bit thin. So I'm going to go Wendell as one. Then I'm going to say... Um, see, because I kind of picked my guests. I didn't have people on I didn't like. Okay. And yeah. you were one of my guests. So yeah, I did, you know, yeah. And so, so there was never anyone that I, I really got off and went, I didn't enjoy that person. Uh, there, there was there was a comedian and I won't name him who was a little bit low energy when we spoke to them and I just think he just wasn't in a good spot. But 
you know, he was a touch low energy for me. Um, but all right, what, what about what about three current Parramatta Eels players? Yep. Who wouldn't you want to be stuck with? Oh, do you a, think on an island? <laughs> yeah, and why? Who, who do you think maybe you wouldn't want to be stuck with? Um, I don't think. I, all right, I don't think I'd like to be stuck with. Jared Hayne for obvious reasons. So I'm going to go Jared Hayne as one. I'm going to say... I don't know why, but there's something about... Maybe because Blake Ferguson got in trouble having cocaine and was punching on in a restaurant. There's something about... I just think he might be a bit of the a... The anger? He might be a bit yeah. of a nutter, you know? Okay. And, like, and, and, you know, if you, you didn't wash the... <laughs> I don't know, the grass skirts quick enough or whatever, he might smack you one in the head. I'm going to go him. And probably Nathan Brown, like, seems like a bit of an angry man. <laughs> he's without a club at the moment, yeah, Brownie. Shame, yeah. He's um, had half a season at the Roosters and okay. now he's... Uh, yeah, he's on the tail end. That's it. And the last one, who's your favourite musician or band to listen to? Ooh. <sighs> Parkway Drive has to be. Okay. But... I've really been getting into Amity Affliction lately, and so the recency effect says Amity, but I think overall, I, I've met the Parkway Drive guys when we were on Triple M, I went to their concerts, I've got all their albums, and I always go back to them, so I'm going to have to say Parkway Drive. Ah, nice, nice. Well, Brian Rowe, thank you very much for not only coming out to the Paracave today, but also having a chat, all things eels and support of the eels, and how we can maybe fix them to win the grand final next year. And I uh, really enjoyed the chat, and I'm sure the fans will too, as part of my fans, uh, rugby league fans series. So thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. Absolute pleasure, and thank you for having me. Hello, how you hey, going, bro. mate? Are you a Paracade podcast listener? I am, bro. It's okay. a great podcast. Everyone tune in. Hey, Go, Parra. Well, welcome back, and thank you for listening to Brian and his rugby league supporting of the Parramatta Eels and Rugby League in general as well. It was an interesting chat and thank you to Brian for coming out to the Paracave and having a look and a chat as well. On the day that we recorded it, actually, the AFL Grand Final was on at the same time. So after we finished the podcast chat, we actually watched the AFL Grand Final together as well. So thank you, Brian, for coming to the Paracave. I hope you enjoyed your visit there. And thank you very much for the chat for the fans as well. Now, as I said before, there's Paracave Podcast merchandise available at the moment. We've got uh, exciting podcast hats for the reasonable price of $10 plus postage and handling. You'll see me wearing them all the time and anywhere and everywhere, also in pictures here and there. So you'll see me wearing them in videos and pictures and at games and stuff. So uh, you should know what it looks like. But if you would like one, all you need to do is order one and email the podcast, www.theparacavepodcast at yahoo.com. Uh, for $10 only, plus postage and handling. Also, a couple of BTZD clothing Paracave podcast polo shirts are available. There is one XL and two large left, so they will be only $25 each, plus postage and handling. So, same way, just order them through the email address, or if that's uh, not your style then you can also just send me a message on the social media channels as well and we'll work out how and when to get that out to you as soon as possible but of course also this podcast would not be without the help and support of the sponsors of the show which include major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale exclusively available at Paramount Leagues Club in the club shop also, shout out to co-sponsors, Bo Cook from Loan Market, your local Penrith mortgage expert. Contact Bo today on 0401 213 236. Get in contact with him for a free chat and see what Bo and his team can do for you and let him know that you heard it here on the Paracay podcast. BTZD Teamwear, the official clothing sponsor of the podcast the makers of the podcast shirts polo shirts 
you can check them out at www.btzd.com.au see what they can do for you and your sports team especially now in the off season of of rugby league or um any time all year round see what they can do and they might be able to help you let them know also that you heard them on the Paracade podcast Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, really appreciate your support. Uh, if you are thinking of think, selling or in the Glenmore Park or the suburbs in the Petrith LGA area, you want that five-star real estate agent and that five-star service, and Shannon is your man. You can contact him on 0421 Thank you to all the sponsors. With your support, it helps the podcast grow and reach more people, which is much appreciated. Details of these sponsors will be available in the show notes. So if you missed that through the chat, then they will be in the show notes as well. So thank you very much for your support. It is much, much appreciated. Thank you to you, the listeners, as well, for listening to the podcast. I hope you have enjoyed the podcast throughout the year as well. This time of year, there will be a few less podcasts coming out each week. There will be some international rugby league coming up in a couple of weeks' time as well, so I'll try and do some uh, podcasts around those as well. I will still try to be doing the once-a-week Thursday dropping interview style podcast as well so throughout uh, October and possibly November as well so stay tuned for those ones as well if there's anyone you would like me to try and get in contact with or you would like to hear from on the podcast just send me a message on social media and I'll see if I can get in contact with them uh, and have a chat with them on the podcast for you guys the listeners and fans so thank you very much for your support as well Uh, don't forget you can put Catch me on Pulse FM as well, 89.9 FM with the Duckman, Friday and Sundays with a chat about all things rugby league and also potentially a few other things as well. Have a great week as best you can. Uh, congratulations to the Penrith Panthers on can um, sealing their third their three peat their third premiership in a row with their 26 24 win over the brisbane broncos a great grand final indeed had everyone on the edge of their seats and will go down as one of the great grand finals in history Probably not my favourite grand final in history. I think, uh, in my personal opinion, the 2015 one was one for me. A lot of people say 1989, 1997 as well. They are just a few more that are really edge of your seat stuff and great grand finals in history. So for me, 2015, but... The 2023 Grand Final is certainly a great Grand Final as well. Not only, definitely if you're a Penrith Panthers fan, but also if you're a Rugby League fan as well. Thank you very much for supporting the podcast. You can also catch it on YouTube as well, the Paracave Podcast. There'll be there's already fifty videos up there from content from all through the history of the podcast, and there'll also be some more coming up as well throughout the weeks as well. So tune into that one, subscribe to that one as well. But to sign off the show, and as I always say, the Paracave Podcast. By the fan, for the fans. Go, para. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.